Let's graph these exponential functions. This is a particular model where if the base of the exponential function is less than 1, then this will be exponential decay. So let's make that note. Let's note that 5 eighths is more than 0, but it's less than 1. So this is going to be exponential decay. So from left to right, this function is going to be decreasing. Let's get some ordered pairs going. So x, f of x. Let's say if x is negative 2, then we have uh, 64 over 25. If we have x to be negative 1, then we have 8 fifths. If we have x to be 0, then we have 1. Uh, the first power, we get 5 eighths. And then the second power, we get uh, 25 60 fourths. And we're ready to graph this. If you have graph paper, that'll be easier. Um, if not, do your best to draw your own. And when negative 2, we get about, what is that? 2 and 14 25ths, so about 2, two and a half. Negative 2, we get close to 2 and a half. So right about here or so, there's an ordered pair. Negative 1 is 1 and 3 fifths. 1 and 3 fifths, right about here. 0, 1, there we go. When x is 1, we get 5 eighths, so a little bit more than a half, right here. And then when x is 2, we get, uh, let's see, 25 over 64, a little bit more than a third, right around a third. So at 2, it's about a third. So if it's about a third, we're about here. Um, not a total surprise, there is our exponential decay function because our base is less than 1. Now I also need to graph the horizontal asymptote and let's label that. So horizontal asymptote is y equals 0, circle it. We need to circle our ordered pairs in our graph. So let's circle our ordered pairs and of course we need our graph. So let's circle our graph as well for our final answer. Um, this here is also part of your final answer. Make sure you label any possible asymptotes. And once again, label your ordered pairs. Label everything. Labeling is a mathematical skill. Let's do the second example. This time the f of x has changed. This time the base is more than 1. And greater than 0, this is now going to be what? Exponential growth. So from left to right, this function is going to be increasing. Once again, we could easily um, create a t-table or a t-chart of ordered pairs. So negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2. I'm sure you could pause the video now and try to get the output values on your own. And now we simply plot the ordered pairs. And once again, you want to label your horizontal asymptote. Horizontal asymptote is, once again, y equals 0. And negative 
two, it's about a half. Negative two, it's a little bit more than a half. So about here. Negative one, three quarters, a little bit higher. A zero, it's at one, a little bit higher. One, it's at four thirds. So at when x is one, we're at one and one third. A little bit higher. When x is two, it finally jumps up. How much did it jump up? It jumped up almost to two. It's actually one and a little bit less than two. So it doesn't seem like it's growing that all that fast, but why don't you pick x to be three and see what happens. Then it's gonna grow really, really quick. Uh, you get 64 over 27. And it's starting to jump up. Exponential growth. This is actually increasing from left to right. Let's circle all the things we need in our labeling of our graph. We need that. We need this as well. Let's analyze these exponential functions. We're gonna go ahead and graph them. Uh, we're going to label our ordered pairs. We're also going to give its domain and range, and we're going to label the horizontal asymptote as well. Why don't we get some of these ordered pairs going? So this first example here, uh, let's have x and g of x, and let's figure out some inputs and outputs. Let's try negative 1 here. When x is negative 1, we get negative one half minus one, so negative three halves. And then when x is zero, we get uh, negative one minus one, which is negative two. And then when x is one, what do we get? We get negative two minus one, which is negative three. You could also use transformations to graph this. Now, if you think of your basic function as 2 to the x, I mean, you could think of f of x equals 2 to the x and then transform this. That's another way to graph this. But when in doubt, if you're ever unsure, just pick a, a several ordered pairs until you are convinced you actually have a graph. I'm going to draw some axes here. Here's the x-axis, and then here's the g of x-axis. So when x is negative 1 we get negative one and one half. When x is zero, we get negative two. And then when x is one, we get uh, negative three. I do know that the horizontal asymptote got shifted. The horizontal asymptote actually went down one unit. How do I know that? Well, it says so in the transformation. This says here, move every y unit down. Move all y, unit, uh, y values down from the basic function. And now, instead of exponential growth, the y values also got reflected. So here, this transformation says the y values got reflected about the x-axis. So let's plot some ordered pairs and see what this really means. Negative one, one and one, uh, negative one and one half. So negative one, negative one and one half, there's an ordered pair. Zero, negative two, here's another ordered pair. And then one, we get negative three, here's another ordered pair. And since you've drawn the horizontal asymptote, we can now connect the dots and see that this exponential function is actually decreasing and it actually lies in quadrants three and four with the horizontal asymptote of what? Y equals negative one. Let's label that. So what do you need when you're trying to demonstrate your graphing ability? 
Well, you need your graph, obviously. You also need all your labels. What do you mean by all your labels? So we're going to circle our graph. We're going to circle our horizontal asymptote. That's required. And then you're going to circle your labeling of ordered pairs. And so we'll circle your t-chart. That will do it. Let's try the second example. Once again, we have a g of x, but your g of x has changed. This time the base is 1 fourth, and you know that is actually an exponential decay. It says move all your y values three units down. So if you're going to move all your y values three units down, what happens to your horizontal asymptote? The horizontal asymptote is now located at y equals negative 3. And then the rest is rather basic. Let's just plot some ordered pairs. Let's label them. Let's try uh, negative 1. So we get 4 minus 3, which is 1. And let's try 0. When x is 0, we get 1 minus 3, which is negative 2. And then when x is 1, we get 1 fourth minus 3. So 1 fourth minus uh, 12 fourths is negative 11 fourths. Negative 11 fourths. So that is 2 and 3, negative 2 and 3 fourths right? Almost negative 3. Let's plot these ordered pairs and see what happens. We're also going to plot the horizontal asymptote, and we're going to label that as well. Once again, x and a g of x axis. Uh, negative 1, 1. Negative 1, 1. 0, negative 2. And then 1, we have negative uh, 2 and 3 quarters. So I'm going to need a negative 3 here. 2 and 3 quarters right about here. Then we have another order pair here. Uh, and then we have negative 1 and 1 here. And we also need to graph our horizontal asymptote. So this is really key. Probably should have graphed that first. Uh, horizontal asymptote is y equals negative 3. This is an exponential decay, and all the y values got shifted 3 units down from its basic graph. Its basic graph was, uh, let's say the basic graph was h of x equals 1 quarter as the base, and then raised to the x power. That is actually decreasing from left to right. So with that, subtract 3 to every single y value, this means it moved your basic graph down three units. Let's connect the dots and see the exponential decay. There it is. Boom. Make sure you draw your arrows at the end so it matches your domain and range. Ah, uh, speaking of which, I'm supposed to write the domain and range for all these problems. Let's do that. The domain of G here is equal to negative infinity to infinity. And then let's look at the range. Let's label the range. The range, remember, uh, if you turn your head 90 degrees to your left, you could probably spot out the range. The range of G, I'm going to uh, write it this way. I'm going to write negative 3 in parentheses up to infinity. So for example B, I need to circle all my labels. I need to circle my graph with all the labels, especially the labeling of a horizontal asymptote that helped you graph your exponential function. It asks for the domain and range as well, so I gotta circle that as well. Let's go back to example A and find a domain and range. Not a problem. Uh, for example A, what is the domain of G? The domain of G is negative infinity to infinity. And then what is the range? The range of G. Yeah, you're reading from bottom to top. So if you're reading from bottom to top, there's the concept of negative infinity all the way up to what? All the way up to negative 1 in parentheses. We don't include negative 1. And then let's circle that for our answer in part A. 
All right, we got everything circled, we got everything labeled, and that's how you graph. You draw and label everything. Below is the graph of y equals e to the x. I'm going to transform this graph. I'm going to move it around so it applies to this function right here, or this output, e to the x minus 3 minus 4. The first thing you want to do when you see a graph online is make sure you put the arrows. You know, when you copy this down onto your own piece of graph paper, make sure you draw the arrows. Those are really important because they have to match your domain and range. So you're going to have to fix the error that's displayed to you. There's actually um, arrows at the end there. The first example here, let's call this example A. Call this one example B. Let's do them separately. The first one here says, take your x value and move it to the right three units. And then take your y value and move it down four units. So if I had to put this in a T chart, what what would that look like? Um, let's see if I have room here. Uh, here's a T chart. For, let's say x and e to the x and if you let's if you want to inspect when x is 0 y is 1 right what if you decide to do something like this what if you had x and now your output is what e to the x minus 3 uh, subtract 4 so this says take your x value and move it to the right three units so this should be a 3, and then take your y value and move it down 4 units, so this should be negative 3. Let me make that clear. This is x, e to the x minus 3, minus 4. How did I get the negative 3? I looked at the previous number up here. It says take the 1 and subtract 4 units from it. So take the 1, take the y value of 1, and then subtract 4 units of it, you'll get negative 3. Over here, this transformation says, take your x value and move it to the right 3 units. So what's 0 plus 3? You get 3 right here. That's what's going on. I'm just writing, I'm transforming or translating the 0 comma 1 here to be 3, negative 3, just by reading the transformations uh, that are given to us. So let's plot 3, negative 3. Let's plot 3, negative 3, which is right here. And this is still exponential decay. I'm sorry, this is still exponential growth. Now we do have a horizontal asymptote. You want to redraw that as well and label it on your own sheet of graph paper. You got to draw everything. Horizontal asymptote here, y equals 0. That was the original horizontal asymptote. What happens then? Well, if the transformation says move all your y values 4 units down, that means we got to move our horizontal asymptote 4 units down as well. So there's our new horizontal asymptote. That's the one I'm going to circle. That's the one I'm going to label. That's the one I need. And now I'm ready to play connect the dots. And there is the transform graph from your basic graph of y equals e to the x. We have our new graph right here. We have this graph. We're going to circle our ordered pairs. In this case, I only plotted one. Uh, and then, of course, we need to circle our final graph with the horizontal asymptote labeled. Bam! There it is. All right. What about the second graph here? Once again, you start off with e to the x. And this time, you, know, you have x, you have x, uh, e to the x. And once again, we started off with 0, 1. The first transformation says, take all your y values and move it 
across the x-axis, which means your original y value was 1, now gets moved to negative 1. But then it also says to what? Add 3 to everything. So what happens to this x and then opposite of e to the x at 3? So all the, both transformations here affect the y value. So the x value doesn't move. It actually stays the same. So you could just substitute it in. It's negative 1 plus 3, which would get you 2. Let's see what happens when you actually perform the two transformations. I'm going to plot 0, 2 right here. And that means your horizontal asymptote has changed as well. Your horizontal asymptote went up three units. So I'm going to draw this here. I'm going to need to label that uh, y equals three as our horizontal asymptote. And now this is instead of uh, instead of increasing, which is the original function, it is now decreasing, and then the graph got shifted up three units. So how do I draw a decreasing graph through this red point? Not a problem. If it helps, I'm actually going to pick on another dot. It might even help to pick on this dot here. Oh no, I, I changed my mind. I'm not going to pick on another dot. I'm simply going to make this a decreasing exponential function. There it is. All right, we're gonna circle our ordered pair. We're gonna circle our graph and our labeled horizontal asymptote. Now I need to go back and finish these problems. I forgot to state the domain and range. Let's state the domain here. Well, that's the domain of the first problem. Domain of uh, the function y here is equal to negative infinity to infinity. What's the range of y? The range of y, remember you're reading the range of y from bottom to top. So if you're reading it from bottom to top, what's the lowest output for the y value, well, it's a really close number to negative 4. So we put parentheses negative 4, and then it goes all the way up to the concept of infinity. How about over here? What's the domain of y in part b? The domain of y in part b is still negative infinity to infinity. And what is the range of y? The range of y, remember, once again, is read all the output values from bottom to top. So we start off with negative infinity, and then we go up to 3, but don't include it. So there's our domain and range for both parts. Got to circle those too. So with graphing, you got to draw everything, and you got to label everything, and do it on your own sheet of paper with your own pencil. Let's graph this exponential function. You gotta remember what was the basic function. What is the most basic exponential function with the natural base of e here? It would be e to the x, and that is exponential growth because e is a number that's greater than one. So in its simplest form, it looks like this from left to right. It is an increasing function and it actually increases rapidly in the first quadrant. Now we even know this ordered pair right here. That ordered pair is 0, 1. Now what we're going to do is move this function around by looking at transformations. And if you're not familiar with these transformations, you could always pick ordered pairs. You could always pick inputs and outputs. And that's always a, a decent approach. 
Uh, let's find some inputs and outputs. Let's try uh, x and g of x. x, is, remember, is your input. Um, let's try negative 2. So if you pick negative 2, when x is negative 2, we get 1 over 2e minus 3. We get 1 over 2e minus 3. So that's something like a, um, close to negative 3, but not quite, right? This is close to negative 3 but a little bit less than negative 3 in magnitude. And what happens if you pick x to be negative 1? When x is negative 1, hmm, we get e to the 0 power, which is 1. So 1 half minus 3. What's 1 half minus 3? Uh, negative 5 halves. What happens when x is 0? Hmm, when x is 0... We get 1 half times e uh, minus 3. So we get 1 half times e minus 3. Now, remember, e is about 2.78. So a little bit more than 1 and then subtract 3. So that's about negative 2. And I think this is enough to get a pretty decent graph. Now you're probably wondering, how come I didn't pick negative 3? Well, you can't, because the transformation says, that's the first thing you want to do, is move this horizontal asymptote. Remember, this horizontal asymptote originally was uh, y equals 0. We're going to move that 3 units down. So 1, 2, 3... We have a horizontal asymptote, and that is labeled as y equals negative 3. Let's plot some ordered pairs. When x is negative 2, it's about negative 3. When x is negative 1, It is uh, that negative 2 and 1 half. When x is 0, we're about negative 2, but not quite. So we're right about here. And I'm going to say that's enough for me to understand what's going on. Yeah, this is an exponential growth function that is not growing as fast as e to the x, and then it's also translated down three units. And there we go. We have our transformed graph. We need to label a lot of things. Uh, let's label our horizontal asymptote. We gotta have our graph circled. We need to label our ordered pairs. There they are. Let's have our graph. Let's have our horizontal asymptote labeled. While we're at it, we might as well figure out the domain and range. What's the domain of G? It is all real numbers or the interval from negative infinity to infinity. What's the range? What is the range of G? Let's see here. Let's look at the range of G. Remember the range of G you're reading from bottom to top. If you're reading from the most bottom output value, we could start at parentheses negative 3 and then go to the concept of infinity. If it helps, turn your head 90 degrees to your left and you might be able to see the range. Finding the final amount in a word problem on compound interest. Suppose that $2,000 is invested at a rate of 3 and 4 tenths percent, compounded semi-annually. Assuming that no withdrawals are made 
Find the total amount after nine years. Ah, this is an investment problem and you're hoping for a return. Do not round any intermediate computations. Round your answer to the nearest cent. This is a famous formula for finite number of compounds. And that formula is A of T as a function. So the final amount is equal to the principal times uh, a base. And that base is counted, uh, calculated as 1 plus the rate divided by the number of compounds per year raised to the total number of compounds, which would be n times t years. So t is usually time with the units of years. n is the number of compounds per year. And then the interest rate is r. Now the r has to be a decimal. What's our principal? In our problem, the principal is 2,000. $2,000. All right, let's label some things here. $2,000 is our principal. Our R as a, um, as a decimal is that. And then N is semi-annually, so twice per year. T is what? T is nine years. We're ready to substitute everything. Find the total amount after nine years. I am going to rewrite our function. It's very important that we know what our function looks like. Our principal is 2,000. We have 1 plus uh, 0 0.034 divided by 2, all raised to the 2 times t. So that is our function. I'm actually going to circle that, even though it's not the answer. But that is what we use as our mathematical model. Now, what we want to find, according to the word problem, is the symbol called a of 9. So if we're going to substitute a of 9, we just need to replace t with the number 9. And then simply take your calculator. Remember not to round anything. Uh, we're going to take the decimal at the end. We get the number 2708. Decimal 9884.18. And we want to round this to the nearest cent. So we are going to look at the thousands place. 8 is more than 5, so we're going to round this up to 99 cents. Now let's answer this problem in a, cons in a complete sentence. The total amount after 9 years is $2,000, I'm sorry, $2,708 and 99 cents. That's not bad. That's a return of $708.99. That's pretty good.